Welcome. Thank you all for joining us for this unprecedented online commencement ceremony at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. We here at UNO have been eager for this moment to recognize and celebrate the achievements of our graduates. We salute your talents and your perseverance, signs of your true maverick spirit. Now, as members of our UNO family, we all gather under these extraordinary circumstances to celebrate with you. We will first begin our ceremony with the presentation of the colors and the singing of the national anthem by UNO music major Aaron Lawrence. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Greetings. My name is Sasha Kopp, and I have the honor of serving as Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at UNO. I'm pleased to welcome you to the University of Nebraska at Omaha's May 2020 Commencement Ceremony. Thank you for joining us, albeit virtually, today. For 112 years, UNO has served as a point of access for excellence in higher education. We're proud to be a premier metropolitan university relentlessly dedicated to our mission of being student-centered, academically excellent, and engaged with our community and our world. We are mavericks, independent thinkers, explorers, risk-takers, and today we congratulate you, our graduating students, who embody this spirit. We're confident that you will continue to innovate, to push boundaries, and strive for success in whatever you do. At this time, I would like to thank our administration, the vice chancellors who oversee business, finance, operations, student success programs, athletics, and community relations, our staff who help UNO operate on campus and online, and our faculty whose scholarship, teaching, and mentorship provide a world of opportunities for our students. You have all worked tirelessly to ensure our students have been able to continue their academic pursuits during this uncertain time. We would not be here today for these graduates without your unwavering dedication. Now it is my pleasure to introduce UNO's Chancellor, Dr. Jeffrey P. Gold. Dr. Gold took on leadership of our university in May of 2017, in addition to his responsibilities while serving as Chancellor of the University of Nebraska Medical Center and chairing the board of UNMC's Principal Clinical Care System Partner, Nebraska Medicine. With both deep knowledge and broad experience in higher education and healthcare, Dr. Gold is a tireless advocate for advancing UNO's Metropolitan University mission of access, excellence in education, and service to our community. Please help me in welcoming Chancellor Jeffrey P. Gold. Thank you for joining us in this celebration of the class of 2020's hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Graduates, 
we are honored to recognize your achievements today and to share this transformational moment with you. In doing so, we also recognize that these milestones are shared by the family, the friends, and the loved ones who walked alongside you throughout this journey. Please take this opportunity to extend a special thanks to these people, both present with you today and in your hearts, those who have helped make today a reality. The University of Nebraska at Omaha's mission is to transform and to improve lives locally, nationally, and globally. Today, we also wish to recognize the professionals whose daily work translate that mission into action and into impact. To the UNO faculty, whose talent and dedication fosters a culture of scholarship, reflecting the highest standards of quality and rigor, and to our remarkable UNO staff, whose spirit of service creates the supportive and caring environment in which all of our students thrive. We thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your commitment, your passion, and your talent with each and every student each and every day, particularly during these times. Today's graduating class is composed of more than 1,643 Mavericks, more than 1,000 newly minted UNO alumni who enter our community with new knowledge, skills, and equally, and maybe even more importantly, the maverick spirit of a can-do, high-energy approach and a strong set of community values. Of those graduating today, 375 are master's degrees and 20 are doctoral students. Some of you are native Nebraskans, some of you came to UNO from across the country, and some of you came from around the world. This class, your class, represents 37 states and 51 countries with 82 international students completing their degree today. Now for our international candidates, we are so proud to have you join the Maverick family. One reason of that pride is to lead this institution in UNO's commitment to our military, veteran, and dependent students, both those on campus, online, and overseas. For nine consecutive years in a row, the Military Times has named our university, has named UNO one of the top 10 universities in the nation for military-affiliated students. Today, we want to recognize all of the veterans and service members among our graduating class and to recognize your commitment to our freedom. For as we all know, freedom is not free. Thank you so much for your service. At UNO, we embrace your role as an anchor institution in our community, and we welcome you, all alumni, future mavericks, and visitors alike, to the campus for athletic events, concerts, lectures, and community meetings that will hopefully return in the near future. I also hope that you will return to our campus as lifelong learners, exploring the rich educational opportunities that our university has to offer. We are your University of Nebraska here in Omaha, and we look forward to being part of your lives for many, many years to come. To the class of 2020, thank you. Thank you for sharing this day with us. Thank you for partnering with us on your educational journey. I can't wait to see what you will do next. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the honorary degree is the most prestigious honor that is bestowed by the University of Nebraska at Omaha. This honor is reserved for those who have rendered extraordinary service to the university, as well as the regional and the global community. Our recipient today is Mr. Samuel Bach. Mr. Bach is being honored with the Doctorate of Humane Letters for his innovative contributions to the field of higher education. Mr. Bach is a world-renowned artist and a Holocaust survivor. His works depict his personal story as well as history, telling vivid stories like no one else. 
His story begins in 1933 at Vilna, Poland. Shortly thereafter, Vilna was under Soviet and then German occupation from 1940 through 1944. Only he and his mother survived. His father and grandparents all perished at the hands of the Nazis. After World War II, Mr. Bach and his mother fled to the Landsberg Displaced Persons Camp. It was here that he was able to take his first painting lessons in Munich. Mr. Bach's artistic talent started when he was recognized at a very young age during an exhibition in the ghetto of Vilna, when he was just nine years old. After studying in Munich, he was able to attend prestigious art schools in Jerusalem and later in Paris. While in Paris, he received a grant from the America-Israel Cultural Foundation and pursued his artistic studies. He had his first exhibition in 1959 in Rome of abstract paintings, and in 1961, he was invited to show at an exhibition at the Carnegie International. Following that, he had a solo exhibition at the Tel Aviv Museum in 1963. During the time of these exhibitions, there was a change in his artistic preferences. This shift led Mr. Bach to paint in a style he called expressionism. In his work, Mr. Bach paints a vivid story of his personal life, of Jewish history, and of his Holocaust experiences. He has completed over 8,000 pieces and continues in his work up to today. This last September, Mr. Bach spent a week on our campus where he visited several different classes to talk about his experiences. He displayed 70 pieces of art in our Weber Fine Arts Building Art Gallery. Hundreds of people from Omaha and the surrounding communities as well as more than 1,500 middle and high school students came to the exhibit and saw his works. He also gave several radio interviews and public talks while on campus. And during an event at the Strauss Performing Arts Center on September 25th, Mr. Bach generously donated three of his original pieces to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. These works were donated in honor of three donor families, the Freed, the Schwab, and the Goldstein families, who have been long-term supporters here at UNO. We encourage all of you to come back to campus in the fall to see these displayed in our Chris Library. For his devotion to telling the story of people who can't, for Mr. Bach's dedication to using his platform to educate new generations, and for his embodiment of what we like to call the maverick spirit. The University of Nebraska at Omaha hereby bestows upon Mr. Samuel Bach the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, this eighth day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and the privileges thereto. Mr. Bach, thank you for all that you've done, and congratulations. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, members of the class of 2020, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the most recent alumnus of our university, Mr. Samuel Bach, who will now make the 2020 commencement address. Mr. Bach, it's all yours. Dear friends, these are very challenging days. Fortunately, we live in times in which the technology allows me to record myself and to speak to you. And I'm not sure if the importance of today's event is within the limits of my vocabulary. I am at a loss for words. I know how meaningful it is to all of you, students, faculty. Imagine how meaningful it is to me to the recipient of the honorary doctorate of the university. It is so moving, it is so inspiring, and at the same time, humbling. Several months ago, my work was exhibited at the Fine Arts Gallery. It was seen by over 4,000, maybe 5,000 visitors. My art has arrived to Omaha thanks to the tireless efforts of 
Dr. Mark Chalinsak, held by Dr. Curtis Hutt, and the determinate support by Chancellor Jeffrey Gold, Vice Chancellor Sasha Kopp, and Dean David Booker, with helpers and donors whom I cannot mention here by name, all of them, but to all of them, my infinite, infinite things. What happened at the show was almost magical. A true symbiosis between my paintings and the souls of their beholders. Many of them were very young. Many arrived in special buses, which the university offered. The title of the show, Witness, the Art of a Holocaust Survivor. What the public discovered at first sight might have seemed strange, a faraway world in which alternative realities related more to icons of art history than to recent events. They showed a world filled with objects that had lost their familiar use. All this painted in a technique <laughs> that belonged to other times. Although my art spoke of a past that relates to sheer horror, the paintings were luminous, the colors bright, some scenes weren't even devoid of some irony or humor. To make all that possible, obviously, I chose to speak of my life and my world by means of symbols, icons, metaphors. And knowledgeable and dedicated docents help the visitor to comprehend the meanings of my images and learn the load of their story. The story of a world in which racism, intolerance, social injustice brought on a huge devastation and irreparable loss. The paintings hinted, obviously, at a world victimized by cataclysmic events. A world which, since it recovered about 75 years ago, had been licking and licking old wounds. In fact, a world of great need of repair and restoration. I hope that the public understood that I was trying to speak beyond my personal experience of the Holocaust. And I dealt with the substance of our human condition. In a nutshell, this is what I undertook to render in my art. My biography. 1933, I was born in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania. 1933, Hitler seized power in Germany. As said before, a survivor of the Holocaust, I carry in me indelible memories. Imagine, 95% of Lithuanian Jews were massacred in the three years of the Nazi rule. 250,000. Jews were the Lithuanian Jews before World War II. I am one of the surviving 5%. I was so very, very lucky to have been spared that cruel fate. Obviously, my life's work was determined by my miraculous survival. For me, the Holocaust is the foremost laboratory of human behavior. And it transcends the events of World War II. It tells us that man's capabilities are limitless, that the best and the worst exist in each one of us. Victims or perpetrators equally begin life as cute babies. But humanity, if not sufficiently alert, is apt to be victimized. 
to one degree or another. Victimized by dangerous individuals that life's distorted circumstances had created and then had them viciously promoted. And these circumstances, of course, as we all know, depend on economy, on education, on family, on values, on personal character, and on choices. Our choices that render people responsible. That is why I believe that the study of World War II, in all its complexity, in its global geography, in its cultural diversities, is most important. And all that in spite of its limitless and foreboding cruelty. I have often been asked, how have you survived? I was lucky, very lucky I say. But it is complicated if you want to know more, if you want to know what I think, read my book entitled Painted in Words. Luck, luck for one thing. I firmly believe that luck has a potential to which one can contribute. My parents did exactly that. They helped my luck. They tried to be informed, prepared. They were resourceful. Alas, a few days before our liberation, I lost my father, but my mother survived and she saved me. But most importantly, my mother couldn't have saved me without the help of Christians who were ready to save us at the risk of their own lives. These incredible heroes are an indispensable component of my personal life. Today we live in a world seized by the global upheaval of the coronavirus. It is packed with apprehensions, worries, dire hardships. It seems that the question of our species survival is at stake. When speaking of this situation, it is difficult to avoid common cliches. We are at a war against an invisible enemy. We are submerged by a tsunami of warnings and advice. We know that we must win that our lives shall continue in a world that is going to be very different. But different, I hope, in a positive sense. The opportunities are there. We are now witnessing incredible acts of heroic generosity, especially in the medical profession. People save people at the risk of their own lives. Courage, resilience, solidarity. Solidarity among individuals as well as among nations. More justice, more democracy, more equality, more humanism. We are not in a time of a second Holocaust. We know what goes on on the surface of the earth. People aren't isolated. The options of overcoming this crisis carry much, much promise. History in all its multifaceted aspects is the collective memory of humanity. Its lessons are priceless. Past errors, dangers, tragedies. Examining that present, reevaluated, could promise a better future. We have a lot to learn, a lot, a lot is now in the hands of the oncoming generations. One day, they shall determine where our society chooses to go. Humanity has never needed young, capable, enthusiastic and well-educated people as much. To all of them, to all of you, I send my very best wishes. Thank you. The Order of the Tower is awarded to individuals whose exemplary service and support have advanced the mission of the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Today, 
we are honored to recognize the Goldstein family for their contributions and support they have made in advancing UNO and human rights. The Goldsteins include Mr. Don Goldstein from Omaha, Gail Rasnick from Boulder, Colorado, and Kathy Goldstein from Pacific Grove, California. They were all raised here in Omaha, Nebraska by Leonard and Shirley Goldstein. Their parents established a lectureship on human rights with the UNO Religious Studies Department. After the passing of Mr. Leonard Goldstein, the siblings carried on his spirit and work of furthering the education, the community engagement, and research of human rights here at UNO. Together, the creation of the Goldstein Family Community Chair in Human Rights and the Leonard and Shirley Goldstein Center for Human Rights was established in January of 2018. This center is in the College of Arts and Sciences and is uniquely composed of over 30 affiliated faculty from five different colleges here at UNO. The Goldstein Center for Human Rights is faculty-governed, nonpartisan, nonsectarian organization that promotes the understanding of issues through teaching, through research, and through creative activity, as well as community engagement, both locally and globally. The Goldstein Center for Human Rights provides access to exceptional teaching through several different conferences and talks where our faculty share their experience with our students and others. It provides access to exceptional community engagement through archives and exhibits, such as Shirley Goldstein's Immigration Rights Legacy, the Freedom of Movement and Religion for Soviet Jews, which was shown in the Chris Library recently. This center also was a major contributor to Mr. Samuel Bach's visit to our campus last fall, leading to his inclusion in their annual lecture series, the Symposium on Art and Human Rights. This symposium featured scholars all across the United States, Europe, and South Africa. These experiences promote cultured discussion and panels for our students. The Goldstein children, Don, Gal, and Kathy, tirelessly work to continue the support of human rights in honor of their parents. In addition to their contributions here at UNO, they've also supported the University of Nebraska Medical Center, Bethel Synagogue, the Jewish Federation, and many more efforts throughout the Nebraska community. For this commitment and for their generous contributions to the education of human rights and the Omaha community, the University of Nebraska at Omaha bestows upon Mr. Don Goldstein, Mrs. Gail Rasnick, and Mrs. Kathy Ann Goldstein the Order of the Tower Award this 8th day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and the privileges thereto. Thank you and congratulations for all you do for UNO and our community. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor's Medal is awarded to those individuals whose outstanding service to the University of Nebraska at Omaha has shaped the institution's course. Their dedication, commitment, and exemplary performance fuels UNO's incredible momentum. Today, we are able to recognize two such individuals, Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Success and Dean of Students, Ms. Kathy Pettit, and the former Dean of the College of Business Administration, Dr. Lewis Paul. Ms. Kathy Pettit has been with the University of Nebraska at Omaha for 15 years. She has fully supported students and has led multiple units and initiatives across the campus and continues to have a transformative impact on our campus community. You will see her work in the Service Learning Academy, Counseling and Psychological Services Department, the Wellness Center, Academic and Career Development Center, and most recently, organizing and developing the new UNO Success Academies initiatives. Ms. Pettit also works with students on an individual level, ranging from situations such as mental health, classroom disruptions, family concerns, homelessness, and other extremely trying situations. 
And she always does this with professionalism, kindness, sensitivity, and with laughter. This kind of care requires her to be available outside of typical business hours, which means she often puts in long days and long hours during the week and on weekends. During the Scott Campus fire, she worked tirelessly to assist the students who were affected by this event. She helped to find them new accommodations, provided counseling during this very, very stressful time. Ms. Pettit also showed compassion to each student and was a positive influence in a very difficult situation. That situation, as well as many others, shows that Ms. Pettit is deserving of the 2020 UNO Chancellor's Medal. Congratulations, Kathy. Well deserved. Dr. Lewis Pohl joined the College of Business Administration at UNO in 1984. He became dean of this college in 2003, where he provided extraordinary and transformational leadership for the college. He made significant contributions to the growth and development of the entire campus as well. His connection and reputation amongst the business community is outstanding. And much of that is attributed to his can-do attitude in regard to collaboration. The success of the entrepreneurship program and collaboration science initiatives are two of these remarkable examples. Dr. Pohl's collaboration extended past a local level and moved into global partnerships with work in India, China, Germany, Finland, Austria, Belgium, and Romania. During his time in Romania, he was awarded an honorary doctorate from the Alexandru Aion Cruza University in Romania. He has documented his exciting work through his personal blog entitled The Traveling Dean. During his time of leadership, the College of Business Administration was accredited in both its business and accounting programs by the Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, which fewer than 200 business schools worldwide can boast. It has also been rated as the number one business school in the U.S. for military veteran students and is able to distribute currently over $900,000 in scholarships to students. This growth of the College of Business Administration led to a new building in 2010, now known as Mammal Hall, and a new addition to the building to begin in 2019 to better support the needs of the students of our College of Business. Dr. Pohl's years of outstanding service to UNO demonstrates his dedication and service worthy of the UNO Chancellor's Medal. Lou, in recognition and appreciation of your leadership of our organization, contributions and expertise, and the long-standing service to UNO, it gives us great pride to bestow upon both Dean Kathy Pettit and Dr. Lewis Pohl the Chancellor's Medal this 8th day of May, 2020, with all of the rights and privileges thereto. Congratulations, and thank you so much, all that you have done. Hello, graduates. I'm Lee Danker, and I'm your alumni director. On behalf of the UNO Alumni Association, I'm pleased to extend congratulations to you, the class of 2020. Along with your diplomas, you have earned new titles today as you transition from UNO students to UNO alumni. More than a century ago, our first graduating class held its commencement ceremony. Those 11 graduates founded a network now with nearly 115,000 UNO alumni. You'll find them doing great things in Omaha, in our state, and all around the world. Many of your parents, your family members, colleagues, and friends are part of that alumni network. In fact, let me take a moment to speak to our alumni watching today. Please, graduates, take a moment to give your special graduate and all members of this class a shout out via social media with the hashtag UNO alumni. I know they'd appreciate hearing your notes of congratulations and your nice words. Now graduates, I ask you to continue your journey by staying connected with the Alumni Association. We're here for you and your association is free for all members. 
You'll receive messages, letters, and invitations from time to time, and I sure hope that we hear back from you. Your ongoing involvement with UNO makes this university stronger, so be a proud maverick for life. You did it, graduates. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Michael Hilt, Dean of the College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this special commencement ceremony. These extraordinary times prohibit interaction. However, I, along with the CFAM faculty, believe it is important to recognize the accomplishments of our graduates. Although this is not the traditional way we honor our students, we remain proud of you and everything you have done to reach this milestone. So what have CFAM students accomplished this year? Well, students from every major in the college won local, regional, and national awards. Art and communication students played a leading role in the presentation of the Samuel Bach Art Exhibition in the Weber Art Gallery. Music students played recitals and concerts to large crowds in the freshly renovated Strauss Performing Arts Center. Theater students performed well-received productions in our Black Box Theater. And through it all, our CFAM students maintain a high level of dedication and service that truly display what it means to be a maverick. I hope you enjoy this very special May 2020 College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media commencement. Today, Alec Paul Johnson, who received his Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Art, will speak on behalf of the students of the College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media, Class of 2020. Hello, members of the Board of Regents, Chancellor Gold, distinguished faculty, esteemed fellow graduates, and honored family, friends, and guests. My name is Alec Paul, and I am a graduate of UNO's College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media. This is where I acquired a Bachelor of Fine Arts with a concentration in sculpture, and I am very proud to call myself a UNO graduate and a maverick. The definition of a maverick is an unbranded calf or yearling, or in our case, an independent, nonconformist, free-spirited, original person. I had the privilege of graduating last semester in December, and I realized the world is not nearly the same as it was six months ago. A lot has changed, and honestly, I don't feel like I have that much of a head start on putting my degree to use when comparing myself to those of you graduating today. Honestly, if someone had asked me two or three years ago where I would have pictured myself today, I would have replied with an extravagant explanation of how I would have had everything figured out and be on my way to becoming a famous and extremely successful artist. I pictured myself with my own large-scale private studio with assistance to help me with fulfilling my great ideas. I also pictured having a huge network of people that would have helped me gain commissions and clients and gallery representation. I also thought I would be extremely rich by now too. But to be honest, I don't have any of those things on the scale that I expected. I have made it on the news a couple of times for building a bunch of snowmen in the middle of the night. That didn't bring me fame or what I would call success. My studio is located in the basement of my apartment complex in a storage unit the size of a closet. My girlfriend helps me with my art projects sometimes, and I compensate her with kisses and hugs. I sometimes make a small sale of my artwork at a local bar or cafe, or at least I did before the pandemic, but these sales don't pay my bills. I have friends that promote my art, but this rarely leads to enough interest for anyone to become a patron. My 15 minutes of fame on the news for my army of snowmen I built in the middle of the night doesn't merit enough of a reputation for galleries to be interested in representing my studio work. Instead of having a bunch of zeros in my bank account, I have a bunch of zeros on credit card bills and student loans. Maybe some of you have felt similar feeling of expectation. Some of us get caught up in expectation, and when things don't turn out the way we thought they would, we get this feeling of disappointment with ourselves and maybe even disappointment from others, such as family members, friends, or even previous professors. You can see that my expectations that I had a couple of years ago with my career as an artist have not been met. This does not mean that what I do have is null and void. I still consider myself to be a very lucky person to have the things that are currently my reality. Even though it feels like my art degree is not as useful as, say, a biochemist that is working on a new vaccine, 
or a systems analyst that can still pull a paycheck by working from home, the reality is that my degree is useful. The things that I have learned about art during my time at UNL are unexchangeable. It's too late for me to go back and become something else. I don't mean for that to be a daunting statement, but to be a solidifying one. I must remind myself why I wanted this degree in the arts in the first place, to experience true freedom with my profession, to answer to no one, to do what I want to do, not what the world or what my boss in my day job wants me to do. Be okay with where you are now. You may see this day as the end of a long journey, but it is also the beginning of a new one. The truth is that now is the best time to have a degree in communication, fine arts, and media. Making positive things happen takes time, which we all have a lot of right now. Graduating with this degree also means taking risks and applying knowledge of the world around you, which is why we chose communication, fine arts, and media in the first place. We see things that the rest of the world does not. We have the ability to open the world's eyes to the beauty of humanity with the use of rhetoric, written words, symbolism, and sound. So I urge my fellow graduates to use the extra time on your hands now that you are done with your education to create more than you ever have. Whether you are a thespian, a playwright, a painter, a drawer, a sports writer, an animator, designer, a reporter, musician, sculptor, public relations specialist, ceramicist, or poet, your endeavors are still applicable in these trying times. The rest of the world is looking more than ever, for something beautiful to inspire them and give them hope for humanity. And we, as accomplished scholars, have the ability to create just that. Thank you. Now we come to that part of the program you have eagerly awaited, the conferral of degrees. Before proceeding with the presentation of candidates, I call your attention to one item of interest. Students graduating with honors are so indicated in your commencement program. In recognition of their outstanding academic achievements, a uniquely designed medallion will be delivered to each student graduating with honors with their diploma. Chancellor, these candidates have completed the requirements set forth by the College of Communication, Fine Arts, and Media. Bachelor of Arts in Art History. Bachelor of Arts in Communication, Bachelor of Arts in Music, Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art, Bachelor of Arts in Theater, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Science in Communication. The faculty of the college takes pleasure in recommending them to you for the conferral of degrees. Wherever you may be today in celebration with your families, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, of the University of Nebraska, I hereby confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree for which you have been recommended, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. On behalf of the entire University of Nebraska at Omaha community, our faculty, our staff, our administration, congratulations to all of you. Now we hope you went ahead and got your own graduation cap and tassel from the UNO bookstore or maybe even made your own. And if you did, this is the time to have your family and friends record this moment for you to move your tassel. Please share this moment using the hashtag MavSpirit. Now, in keeping with the time-honored academic tradition, you may now move your tassel from the right to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the UNO Class of 2020. Congratulations. At this time, we will recognize each individual degree recipient. Please watch for your name and degree to be read and celebrate your many accomplishments with your family members at home. Diego Arazo Reyna. Rachel Ruth Bonner. Benjamin Gordon Helwig. Madeline Grace Goss. Alexander James Kubrin. Stephen J. Pellish. Angela Renee Houston. Emily 
White. Cameron Patricia Baker. Molly Treaty. Yin Tung Kao. Nicholas Povey. Forrest Jean Waymeyer. Sabrina Page Houston. Jacob Ryan DeMauro. Morgan Robert Runnis. Karina Adele Al Rafa. Simon Roger Ristow. Justin Davis Keys. Ya Jing Zhuang. Curtis Claude Phillips. Alexander Lyle Sharp. Alexander Sheridan Chase. Kendra Faith Newby. Melissa Inigas. Morgan Grace Wright. Josiah Walden Navarro. Hannah Nicole Ashbury. Jared Frederick Strandberg. Courtney Joe Sidsick. Caitlin Grace Mason. Connor Gerard Kurtz. Emily K. Peterson. Aaron David Lawrence. Michelle Sue Jankowski. Jacob Jordan Candia. Trey Manuel Nielsen. Quinn Clarice May DeRider. Keely Marie Algy. Jenna Marie Hynek. Anna Jensen. Shaquille DeRay Butler. Yuhan Liu. Eric Michael Juckerst. Lillian F. Griffith. Maria Jose Gonzalez Armendarez. Aaron S. Amy Bernard Santos. Samuel James Calhoun. Connor Michael Moritz. Alexander Reed Howdle. John Reed Olson. Christine Marie Garekachea. DeForest Cox. Jennifer T. Wynn. Thomas Edward White. Mackenzie Lee Davis. Brooke Alexis Wegner. Abigail Rose Lewandowski. Ania Elise Green. Ian Goodwin. Alexandra Nicole Grasso. Maya Q. Solorana. Simon Philip Olivares. Grace Arant. Okina Gia Tran. Mariah Hood. Adam Michael Hussam Abu Nasser. 
Donald Ray Kellum II. Grant Rohan. Delaney Sandra Rannells. Jonathan Orozco. Caleb Alfio Johnson. Kyleen Abraham. Rosalia Marie Alexis. Philip A. Lehman. Maria S. Mickles. Delaney Marie Jackson. Blake Mitchell File. Kumiko Adachi. Maria Elizabeth Holloway. Kyle Joseph Case. Alexander Colin Throop. Curlin Cisneros. We thank you for joining us today in this celebration. Though our nation is in the midst of an unprecedented period, we wanted so very much to recognize you today and confer your degrees. Copies of your degrees will be delivered to you in due course. In addition, if your schedule allows, we hope you will join us back on campus in either homecoming weekend or in Baxter Arena in December for a special commencement to be held for our spring 2020 graduates. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2020. And remember to always do all the good you can for everyone you can, whenever you can and wherever you can. Once a maverick, always a maverick. U-N-O! 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 Go Mets! Go Mets!